Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 355. Truth comes to all alike, to all who on her name dare call with motives pure. Then let us all unite with freedom's star in sight, press onward in the right which shall endure. Hymn number 355. scriptural this morning will be given by Wendy from Georgia. Good morning. First John, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. First Corinthians, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same selfsame Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and then follow by, with the repetition of the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, Father which, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in, in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let us sing hymn number 118. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Kindle every high desire. Cleanse my thought in thy pure fire. Hymn number 118.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We have members and participants from around the world. And you can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a channel on YouTube that has over 2,000 videos, recordings of services, articles, hymns, classes, lots of good stuff. On our, featured on our website is a very encouraging and instructive article by Edward Kimball entitled, Declaring What is True. And this article points out the importance of never ever giving in to false suggestions. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which is a training session in Christian science. And we just had a really good one. So if you missed us, check us out on the website or on YouTube. On Wednesdays, we have a testimony meeting at 8.15 p.m where you can hear testimonies of healing and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. You can listen to all of our services either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone through a teleconference number that we provide. Also on Sundays mornings at 11 a.m. we have a Sunday school for children and that Sunday school is conducted via its own teleconference number. So if you don't live in the area, just call us. and We'll give you the number and your child will be most welcome at our Sunday school. And for all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. Uh, we will have another Bible study session next Saturday at 10 a.m. So check our website for the questions for that Bible study session. And please join us. That's Saturday morning at 10 a.m. I guarantee you'll like it. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained from reading and studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Melissa from Australia. From the chapter Fruitage in Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, page 635. Death is unstopped. As a mother of a family, my heart goes out in love and gratitude to that good woman we are privileged to call our leader for all she has done through her book for me and mine. Ten years ago I was healed of hereditary deafness and catarrh of the head simply through reading the book Science and Health. For years previous, I had consulted and taken treatment from some of the best specialists for the ear and throat, both in England and America, but grew worse all the time. I was then urged by a lady who had been healed through Christian Science to buy this book and study it. I did so very reluctantly, but had not read 50 pages before I felt I had indeed found the truth which makes free and can truly say, from that time I have never had a return of the ailment. That for which I am, however, most grateful, is the daily help it is to me in my household of young children. I am sure if mothers only knew what Christian science truly means, they would give all they possess to know it. We have seen croup, measles, fever and various other children's complaints, so-called, disappear like dew before the morning sun through the application of Christian science. 
the understanding of God as ever-present and omnipotent. It has been proven to me without a doubt that God is a very present help in trouble and what a blessed help this wonderful truth is in the training of our children and how quickly the child grasps it. Some time ago, my little girl, then three years old, dislocated her shoulder. I was alone in the house at the time. The pain was so intense that she became faint. I treated her the best I knew how, but kept holding the thought that just as soon as someone came, I would run for help. She seemed to grow worse and cried very much. I undressed her and tried to twist the arm into place, but it caused such suffering that I began to get afraid. Then, like a flash, came the thought, what would you do if you were out of the reach of a practitioner? Now is your time to prove God's power and presence. With these thoughts came such a sense of calm and trustfulness that I lost all fear. I then asked the child if I should read to her. She said, yes, Mama, read the truth book. I began reading aloud to her from Science and Health. In about half an hour, I noticed she tried to lift the arm but screamed and became very pale. I continued to read aloud and again she made an effort to put some candy into her mouth. This time I noticed with joy that she almost reached her mouth before she felt the pain. I kept reading aloud to her until my sister and two boys came in when she jumped off her bed so delighted to see her brothers that she forgot her arm. She then began to tell her aunt that she had broken her arm and Mama treated it with the truth book. When this happened, it was about 10.30am and by 3pm she was playing outdoors as though nothing had ever happened. Mrs M. G. Winnipeg The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 12 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Spirit. Golden text is from 1 Thessalonians. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. The responsive reading is from 1 Corinthians. As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. 
Fairly from Maryland will read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Job. There was a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. Numbers. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take up the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. John. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. 
Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mark. Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Romans, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Spirit God has created all in and of himself. Spirit is the only substance, the invisible and indivisible infinite God. Things spiritual and eternal are substantial. Things material and temporal are insubstantial. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Prophet, a spiritual seer, disappearance of material sense before the conscious facts of spiritual truth. The ancient prophets gained their foresight from a spiritual incorporeal standpoint when sufficiently advanced in science to be in harmony with the truth of being, men became seers and prophets involuntarily, controlled not by demons, spirits, or demigods, but by the one spirit, 
It is the prerogative of the ever-present divine mind and of thought which is in rapport with this mind to know the past, the present, and the future. Acquaintance with the science of being enables us to commune more largely with the divine mind, to foresee and foretell events which concern the universal welfare, to be divinely inspired, yea, to reach the range of fetterless mind. To understand that mind is infinite, not bounded by corporeality, not dependent upon the ear and eye for sound or sight, nor upon muscles and bones for locomotion, is a step towards the mind science by which we discern man's nature and existence. All we correctly know of spirit comes from God, divine principle, and is learned through Christ and Christian science. If this science has been thoroughly learned and properly digested, we can know the truth more accurately than the astronomer can read the stars or calculate an eclipse. This mind reading is the opposite of clairvoyance. It is the illumination of the spiritual understanding which demonstrates the capacity of soul, not of material sense. This soul sense comes to the human mind when the latter yields to the divine mind. Such intuitions reveal whatever constitutes and perpetuates harmony, enabling one to do good but not evil. You will reach the perfect science of healing when you are able to read the human mind after this manner and discern the error you would destroy. The Samaritan woman said, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Our master rebuked the lack of this power when he said, O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Both Jew and Gentile may have had acute corporeal senses, but mortals need spiritual sense. The soul-inspired patriarchs heard the voice of truth and talked with God as consciously as man talks with man. It is a question today, whether the ancient inspired healers understood the science of Christian healing or whether they caught its sweet tones as the natural musician catches the tones of harmony without being able to explain them. So divinely imbued were they with the spirit of science that the lack of the letter could not hinder their work. And that letter without the spirit, would have made void their practice. Spiritual sense is a conscious, constant capacity to understand God. It shows the superiority of faith by works over faith in words. Its ideas are expressed only in new tongues, and these are interpreted by the translation of the spiritual original into the language which human thought can comprehend. The principle and proof of Christianity are discerned by spiritual sense. They are set forth in Jesus' demonstrations, which show by his healing the sick, casting out evils, and destroying death, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is disregard of matter and its so-called laws. Spiritual sense contradicting the material senses 
involves intuition, hope, faith, understanding, fruition, reality. Spiritual ideas, like numbers and notes, start from principle and admit no materialistic beliefs. Spiritual ideas lead up to their divine origin God and to the spiritual sense of being. The effects of Christian science are not so much seen as felt. It is the still, small voice of truth uttering itself. We are either turning away from this utterance or we are listening to it and going up higher. Willingness to become as a little child and to leave the old for the new renders thought receptive of the advanced idea. Gladness to leave the false landmarks and joy to see them disappear. This disposition helps to precipitate the ultimate harmony. The purification of sense and self is a proof of progress. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Unless the harmony and immortality of man are becoming more apparent, we are not gaining the true idea of God, and the body will reflect what governs it, whether it be truth or error, understanding or belief, spirit or matter. Therefore, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Be watchful, sober, and vigilant. The way is straight and narrow, which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh, in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death, either here or hereafter certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. The scientifically Christian explanations of the nature and origin of man destroy all material sense with immortal testimony. This immortal testimony ushers in the spiritual sense of being, which can be obtained in no other way. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 247. O oh, walk with God along the road, your strength he will renew. Wait on the everlasting God, and he will walk with you. Hymn number 247. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private pain Living fear Only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. 
called to take his light to a world where wrong is right what could be too great a cost sharing life with one who's lost through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear they must hear the words of life only we can share people need the Lord people need Let's now sing hymn number 346. Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight, hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Hymn number 346.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal, matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God and man is his image and likeness. Therefore man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>